The impact of platform fees, trading fees and management fees on a portfolio can be extremely damaging to long term success. Add in taxes and the effect can be truly catastrophic. In this video we're going to work through several examples of how a person might invest in the stock market, what we think the best method is and show you how fees and taxes can wipe off almost half of your portfolio's value. Let's check it out. Welcome to Money Unshackled, the investment channel that says you and your finances is free. This is Andy, I'm Ben, and if you like what we say, click the like button, hit subscribe, and be sure to check out our new website. Also, if you want to support the channel and get rich in the process, then check out some of the links in the description below where we've listed lots of cool stuff that will help you become financially free, including up to £100 cash back when you sign up to one of the peer-to-peer -peer platforms. Let's get into it. Our investor. In these worked examples, we assume that an investor is regularly saving £250 a month into an investment platform and that they are achieving after inflation returns of 6%. All workings assume that inflation has been factored in. For the sake of simplicity, in this video we've assumed that you'll get the same return whether you invest in ETFs, managed funds or even individual stocks. Section 1. Fees. A hidden parasite. If you are investing in the stock market, you are going to have to navigate an entire ecosystem of fees. At Money Unshackled, we have long promoted the use of low-cost investment methods such as ETFs over more costly managed funds and even individual stocks. And here we're going to show you why. Here is our baseline. It's how big our investor's pot would be if left to grow over a 30-year term adding £250 a month and compounding at 6% net return from growth and reinvested dividends. £244,000, not a bad little pot to retire on. 30 years of industrious saving and investing, giving you a result that you deserve. But let's now consider the fees. ETFs generally have the lowest fees. For this video, we've used the Vanguard FTSE 100 ETF and the Vanguard platform to demonstrate our example. This has total fees of 0.26% cheapest chips. Incidentally, their FTSE 250 ETF does have high transaction costs built in, making the total fee 0.4%. For our example, we'll use 0.26% and ask you to think twice about hidden transaction fees when you choose your ETFs. Managed funds, on the other hand, are notorious for having high hidden fees. The managed fund that we've used for this example is the Investec UK Alpha Fund. To invest in it, you would incur fees of around 1.2%. 1.2% doesn't sound like much, but consider 1.2% knocked off your 6% after inflation gain, that is only 4.8%. This will have a large knock-on effect, as we will see. And finally, by buying shares individually, you will incur lots of different fees. You will need to regularly rebalance your portfolio to keep it performing. We'll assume this to have a cost of around £200 on a 20 stock portfolio. Ongoing fees will include stamp duty on the rebalancing of your portfolio and platform fees. You'll also have to pay, we estimate, around £45 a year for those um, regular monthly deposits. This makes total fees on this investment portfolio of 0.375% a year plus £245. Let's look how this graphs. If we'd invested in ETFs, our after fees total pot size barely moves. We're able to walk away with £233,000 with fees barely making a dent on our retirement. Whereas if we'd invested in managed funds, we've paid fund manager salaries and other costs of tens of thousands of pounds over the years, leaving us with only £196,000 to spend on ourselves. And if the investor thought that they knew best and invested directly into shares, returning the same as a fund manager could achieve, they'd have performed a little better after fees, keeping £210,000 to play with in retirement. Of course, this assumes you know what you are doing and are able to get the return before fees as a fund manager. Of course, we didn't even consider whether you have an itchy trigger finger and trade even more frequently. The effect of fees is truly scary. The moral of the story is, unless you really think you can perform better, it, then it's best to stick to an ETF. It's all in the fees. Section 2. The Greedy Tax Man don't forget that as an investor, the government feels that it is entitled to take chunks out of your invested savings, despite the fact that you are doing the right thing and planning for your future. 
In any case, if you invest without shielding yourself from tax, you will be stung and stung hard. Tax is very much dependent on your personal circumstance, so let's look high level at what a high rate taxpayer might expect to keep after they have invested in ETFs versus investing in managed funds. A high rate taxpayer has to pay a crippling 32.5% dividend tax. We've assumed that half of your returns will come from dividends and, and we've also factored in that each investor gets a £2,000 dividend tax threshold allowance. Starting again at our baseline, let's now look at what a higher rate taxpayer would expect to keep investing in ETFs and managed funds. Here we see that a higher rate taxpayer might keep only £208,000 investing in ETFs. And here's what an investor in managed funds might keep. A higher rate taxpayer investing in managed funds might only keep £176,000 of their potential £240,000 pot size, on the way to half your pot being lost to fees and taxes. There is of course a way to avoid taxes. Just like an ETF has been invented to avoid fees, the ISA has been invented to avoid taxes, and legally. A stocks and shares ISA works in exactly the same way as a cash ISA. You avoid paying taxes on your returns. There are some exceptions to this rule, and some taxes which can't be avoided, such as the US withholding tax, which is 0.15%, but for a UK investor investing in UK stocks, this shouldn't be an issue. Conclusion. The ultimate fee and tax busting combo is therefore to build up a portfolio of ETFs within an ISA. Of course there is still reasons to buy stocks and shares directly, and we do this ourselves. If you think you have seen a market beating opportunity to buy a stock, then by all means, take that opportunity. Of course, what we've just discussed doesn't mean that managed funds are completely obsolete. They can be used in certain areas to gain greater returns. For example, I like to use investment trusts that invest in smaller businesses because they have expertise in areas that, that tracker funds just don't have. But for most of us, following a strategy of fee and tax minimization will be the key to success for a long-term investment plan. Question of the day, have you put much thought into fees and are you making the most of your ISA allowance? Tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. On this channel we talk a lot about personal finance, investing and all things money. And if you want to see more great content, please click the subscribe button below. This is Money Unshackled. See you next time.